If you've ever lost data or you want to protect yourself from losing any data, then stick around for the rest of this video as I walk through how to use the Synology Hyper Backup to protect yourself against disaster. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps support the channel by recommending it to more people. One of the key benefits of using a NAS is to centralize all of your data, such as your photos, documents, and other important data, into one location. Assuming that you're using some type of redundancy on your NAS, your data is safer and more convenient to get to from your NAS than it is on your PC directly. Despite being safer, you're still vulnerable should there be a hardware failure with your NAS, or if it were to get damaged or stolen. As RAID isn't really a backup, it's critical that you take some measures to protect yourself in the event that something were to happen, such as a hardware failure, accidental deletions, or worse, virus or ransomware, as these can be disastrous if you don't have any kind of backup. For the best protection, it's recommended that you use the industry standard 321 backup strategy, which effectively gives you three copies of your data, two different types of media, such as hard drives or cloud or whatever you want to use, and at least one copy off-site. In today's video, we're going to cover some of these methods and show you how to easily set up a backup strategy using Synology's Hyper Backup to protect yourself from disaster. Assuming you have an extra USB drive, large flash drive, or second NAS attached to your system somewhere, the first step in getting started is to install Hyper Backup application. To do this, just go to your package manager, search for Hyper, and you should easily find it and select Install to install the application. When you first launch the application for the first time, it'll prompt you to choose what you want to back up. We won't be covering any LUNs in this video, so we'll choose between either folders and packages or complete system. There are advantages to both, but if you want to do a full backup, you'll need to use the Synology C2 Cloud Storage or another Synology NAS. For most people, you'll select folders and packages as that will allow you to back up to a greater variety of locations, including USB drives, other storage devices, cloud services, and services such as Google Drive or Dropbox. For purposes of this video, we're going to select a local shared folder and USB option, click Next, and then you're prompted to choose between multiple or single versions. The difference here is that single version, only the most current copy will be kept. This is normally okay, however, if you were to pick up a virus or overwrite data in some way, a single copy can be an issue. If you select multiple copies, it'll provide you a form of versioning, allowing you to keep different versions in the event that you need to grab an older copy of the file because something was overwritten or damaged in the file. In addition, multiples can also provide you the best protection against ransomware as you can restore files from an earlier period of time. The only downside is it will take a little bit more space. For this video, I'm going to leave and select multiple and select next. In the next section, you'll need to select your destination. As we're going to be backing up to a USB drive, I'll select a drive from the pull down and create a directory on that USB drive in order to store my backups. Next is to select what you want to backup. In other words, what folders do you want to protect? You can select as many or as few as you want, but my suggestion is that you focus on your data shares as typically that's not replaceable. When you finish your selections, hit Next. If everything is OK, then hit Next and go to the next screen. This is where you'll make some important decisions on how your backup will behave. The first thing you can do is change the name. You can name this so that it's more descriptive and it makes sense because you'll end up creating a variety of backup sets. Next, you need to tune the frequency of your backups. The default is daily, but you can change it to weekdays, weekends, or just what works for you. The only other choice you need to make is whether or not you want client-side encryption. Depending on the data you're backing up and where you're backing up to, this can be an important decision. If you're backing up to a removable USB drive, I would really recommend that you enable the client-side encryption. For this video, I'll go ahead and select it and fill in the password information. You'll then get a prompt that it will download the encryption key and warn you that you'll need either the key or the password to decrypt the backup. After you acknowledge the message by saying yes, you're taken back to the screen. You can leave the rest of the defaults. My recommendation is that you always leave the data integrity enabled as that'll test the data in the backup set to ensure that the files are good and not corrupted. When you're done, hit next and you'll be taken to the next prompt. The next screen can be left default. However, you may want to lower the maximum number of versions as 256 is a bit high. 
You can always change this number, but my suggestion is you start with a lower number and increase it if you end up with the space. Without knowing how much space each version is going to take, it's hard to estimate the initial number. Remember that versions will take up much less space as only the changes are saved. So unless you're changing lots of data every day, it probably won't be a huge amount of space. For this experiment, I'm going to use 10 and hit next to continue. As this will run daily, it should provide me with approximately 10 days of versioning, which is not a lot, but it'll get me started. You're now going to see a summary of your backup for review and just click down after you reviewed it. You'll be given the option to run the backup now, so select yes if you want to run it now. The backup will complete and show you the results when it's done. If you need to make changes, such as I did as I forgot to name the job correctly, you can go back at any time and edit all the items in your backup set. If you have another NAS or device such as a TrueNAS or Unraid that supports rsync, you can also back up your data to that as well. In addition, if you're a Google Drive or Dropbox user, you can use that as a destination target. I'll quickly show you how to back up your Synology unit to another NAS such as a QNAP or another brand as a reference to illustrate the flexibility of hyper backup. We're going to start the same way by creating a new backup job, but this time I'm going to scroll to the bottom and select rsync. The same prompt as before and I'm going to leave it as a multiple version. On the next screen, I'm going to select rsync compatible server. If you're backing up to another Synology, you would select the Synology rsync server, but as I'm backing up to a QNAP, I'll select the compatible option. Enter the IP address of your destination device. For the transfer encryption, I'll leave it off as I'm on my local network, but if you're transferring from remote sites, I would turn this on. This encryption is a little different than encrypting your backup. It's, it's actually a point-to-point -point encryption strictly for transmission. The next section may be a bit confusing as despite being the destination information, the username and password information that you type here is actually the one from the source NAS. In the backup module, select shared folder of your destination device that you want to use and again create a directory for that backup and select next. This is where you're going to select the data you want to back up and click next for the next screen to see your summary. On the next screen, you're gonna see your settings. Again, this is where you're going to name it, set your schedule, enable encryption as needed. Once it completes, you'll be given the option to run the backup just as you did before. I'm gonna click on yes and select done. It should take me back to the main screen and actually start the backup. This may take a while depending on your devices, the amount of data you're backing up, whether or not you selected encryption, and the speed of your network. I'm not going to go through a, every combination, but as you can see, you can back up to a number of devices and services such as Google Drive or Dropbox. Some of the practices I use in my backup strategy is to group things. For example, all the items that require encryption and are very critical to me, I back up more frequently, such as daily, while backups to cloud services I do once a week. Obviously, if you prefer, you can do everything in one backup set and run it every day. But just remember that you should have at least three copies of your data at any given time. So structure your backup schedules accordingly. I'll cover syncing in addition to backing up in a future video. Anyway, that's it for today's video. And please feel free to post any comments or questions in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. If you find this video useful, please give it a like as it helps the channel by being discovered by more viewers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.